Okay, we're now joined by Coach Gary Patterson from TCU. Coach, can welcome to our media days and your thoughts about the coming season. Well, yeah, it's, uh, number one, we're excited, as always. Uh, people who say the coaches don't like media days, I love it. I get a chance to be around you guys. Uh, as Gary, you know, you, you get in the season, uh, you got to be Coach P or whoever else that you got to turn into. Uh, but this, you know, that's why I always come early to do the radio shows and do all that just for the simple reason that it gives me a chance to uh, get a chance to talk to everybody. But it, again, you know, going in, it's only our, our, I think it's going to be our seventh year in the Big 12, uh, coming off 11 and 3 season, playing the championship game, winning a bowl game. And, uh, you know, I think probably everything that you, you know, I usually find out what we're all about by reading the magazines just like you guys do. Uh, people like Phil Steele and some of them, they do a great job of analyzing everything. But, uh, I think the biggest thing for us, everybody knows we got to grow up at offensive line. We had five guys that were seniors, and uh, four of them are in NFL camps. Uh, we have some talented group behind them, but we're probably in a depth. So staying healthy is going to be a big key for there. Uh, quarterback position, Sean Robinson, I brought today. Usually I don't bring a young player uh, with me, but I brought three off. Usually I bring four, but I brought five so he could come with a couple older uh, offensive players so he could get to know each other. I joked the other day with somebody. Uh, two years ago, I didn't bring Kenny Hill, and we went 6-6. Six and six, And last year, I brought him, we went 11-3. And so I figured we didn't need to wait two years to uh, win enough ball games. And so uh, I think you'll find out all of those guys are really good guys, along with Ben Banigou and Ty Summers, uh, good people that we brought with us as far as uh, what they're like. They're good-looking athletes, plus uh, they handle themselves very well. Uh, but as a season, you know, it's uh, you go into it, there's going to be some question marks. We were thought of last year as being young on defense and we're able to grow up. And and this year we're going to be younger on offense, at least uh, as far as starts and all those kind of things. And so how do we grow up? And, um, you know, here in a couple of weeks, we got, we've got we uh, got a month to uh, be able to get that done. Uh, you have a very strong schedule. I think one of the things everybody wants to talk about the Ohio State game, but to be honest with you, you know, you, you know we tell our teams all the time, it's uh, you got to get ready for the games you're supposed to win and your league games and then the big games take care of themselves uh, because we do have Texas starting off the Big 12 Conference after Ohio State along with Iowa State which we lost to last year then you have a you have a Texas Tech and then an OU and so uh, for us we're going to worry about TCU and we're going to worry about Southern uh, going into the sit going into the uh, we got a lot of guys on defense back we lost some good players how do we uh, how do we replace them not very many of them but they 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 played a lot of starts uh, and so for us, uh, how do we do that? So uh, questions. Okay, we'll take questions from the floor for Coach. If you'll put your hands up, we'll get a, a microphone to you so you can ask your question. we got a question up here on the front middle. And if you'll give your name and your affiliation first, and then we'll come over here to the side. Yeah, uh, Jake Trotter with uh, ESPN. Uh, Gary, you brought Sean Robinson, so for superstitious reasons or because you're ready to name him uh, uh, starting Superstitious reasons. Uh, obviously, he's the guy that's played in the most games. He played in six, and obviously he started, which is a hard place to play. He was able to win in Lubbock, which we, this last year. So uh, obviously he's already proven himself. He probably has the edge. But Mike Collins, 6'5", uh, got transferred that set out last year. Uh, Smart dude that can that can really spin the ball, uh, leader, great kid. And then you have Justin Rogers, uh, that was one of the best players out of the state of Louisiana, uh, that uh, came in, in in January. And then you also have Grayson Mulestein, that's a fifth-year senior. It's probably top to bottom, safe depth chart-wise, um, probably the best we'd be. But you know, you listened to me before. I don't I don't judge quarterbacks uh, in practice or stats or anything else. I judge them on Saturdays. Uh, we had a guy a long time ago by the name of Jeff Ballard, and he's turned out a great family man now, got kids, what married. But, I mean, he got fired every Tuesday, every Tuesday in practice. He ended up 19-2 and two as a starter, and I would have never found out except Ty Gunn uh, got hurt, uh, you know, like against BYU, and, and Jeff came in and led us on five scoring drives, and we came back to win 51-50. And so it's one of those things where, you know, that position is just different when you have a new guy in place. You know, I think it's, you, you, you do them a disservice if you uh, if you ask too much of them as far as the pressure of it. It's, there's enough pressure on that position. Anyway, even though people call me a defensive guy, you know, we've, I've had a few quarterbacks come through that have been successful, uh, and we've had to change guys that people didn't think. And so between between uh, Sean and Mike and, and Justin and Grayson, you know, it's 
how do we how do we get them with their offensive line? They're going to have a I think a very good skill group around them, and how do they grow up and how do they become leaders? And I think one of the biggest ways to become a leader is, is to come to this uh, this event and get a chance to see all of you and see you know really what's out there, what you what you represent and the people that are going to be talking about you and what you do. And so, uh, you know, I thought it was a good thing. Got a question on the left, your left side, Coach, halfway back. Sure, go ahead. Jason Elk with Stillwater News Press. You're one of five coaches that brought a running back, uh, and obviously this is a league typically dominated by quarterbacks. How do you feel the, the depth of the running back position looks in the Big 12 this year? Uh, yeah, there's, there's some very good ones. Um, obviously, uh, you have the, the two guys up at Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, I think we have two, we have two very good ones. Uh, but there's other guys. There's other guys in the league that have that have got good tailbacks. But as yeah, so you can see, Shaywo's here. I think he's uh, somewhere close to 6'4", 240 pounds. Uh, Jet, we we call him Jet, but Jerry Sanderson is you know is around the 210 to 215 range. Uh, you know they played as true sophomores last year. Uh, we brought in a junior college running back uh, that's a four for three, Amani, that's uh, that gained somewhere like 1,600 yards last year, along with uh, Kennedy Snell. And so for us, you know, we, we feel, I don't think you can ever have any time I've ever, somebody said, well, you, you got three really good tailbacks, you're gonna play them all. Then usually by the, about the third game of the season, uh, the, third, the third guy's playing. And so I don't think it, it's a position where I don't think you can have enough good tailbacks. And, you know, obviously anytime you have a guy that can make you miss in the league when you have to play him, uh, you know, we gotta play a really good one, at a couple good ones at Ohio State also. So. Uh, uh, it's good that you practice against them because you know what you got to what you got to tackle. Got a question on the aisle about halfway back in front of you, Coach. Sure. Yeah, Gary Barry Trammell with hey, the Oklahoma. Uh, the the Big 12's perception has dramatically improved in the last couple of years. Uh, the instability question seemed to have gone away. Have you detected that on the recruiting trail and in the, in the circles you run in? And is that a question you don't have to answer so much anymore? And has it benefited all the schools? Yeah, but well, number one, I didn't. Now you're talking to a guy that's been a lot of conferences. I don't know why anybody thought the Big 12 had instability. I mean, you should've been in all the conferences I've been in. <laughs> I mean, it's through the years, but you know, it's less. And, and and I think you're seeing. You just look in. If you look in the recruiting, you know, kids are starting to stay, at least in the state of Texas or in surrounding states, starting to stay home more. Uh, lot have some good players. You know, I don't. I don't. Every year is different. When you see guys going to the NFL or good teams, it usually comes down to uh, how old are they. You know, I think one of the things with this league that's going to be it's going to be a plus and a and a negative is just number one. I think it's going to be a wide open. You just got a chance to be more parity. I think it's it, whoever did a be the best job since January of growing up their football team. Uh, obviously, I think West Virginia a couple teams in our league that have quarterbacks returning. Uh, so I think you give that you have to give them advantage because I think an older quarterback helps you. But I do be, believe the stability and and just the you know the way uh, Oklahoma did in the playoff run, getting getting to where they did last year, the way they played, and other teams, the way we played in bowl games. I, I'd have to say that I'd have to say that you'd have to give us a lot more credit than sometimes we're doing. And I think there's a lot of good coaching that goes on in this league. I've been you know I, I'm always I'm always interested in people that don't don't think that one of the reasons why it's hard for our league is that we're one of the very few leagues where we play everybody and when you play everybody when you play a round robin that's more difficult than it is if you go on and off the schedule with somebody that you play every couple years for the simple reason you can't fool them uh, you got to have better players and you also have to be in a situation where you have to be able to change and you got to grow your teams up continually and so uh, we're in a league where everybody knows each other Everybody studies each other. We have to recruit against each other. And we're also friends. If there was anything I would change about this media days is we had one night where we could all go to dinner. And other conferences we've had where we've done that, where you you got a chance to meet the four best, because everybody brings their four best people, four best players, and their, and their head coach, and their wives, and get a chance to know them. Because somewhere down the line, you know, even from the other conferences I was at, I've, I've helped other players that I got to know in those conferences. Because, you know, I've always said, you know, and I think it's helped us at TCU. You got to hate when you play on Saturday. You got to hate each other for about three hours. But outside of that, you, you know, you got to you got to do what's best for the conference and do the things you need to do. And I think you know that's what I've done at TCU. I've helped every other sport recruit. From when they bring them on campus, they can bring them in my office because it's it's best for them to become good at what they do. And 
you know, our basketball got back to the NCAA tournament. You know, Sloss, he's not, he didn't make the uh, series this year, but he's been to it a bunch. And you look at all of our other sports, it's just, you know, the only way that you're going to win is everybody everybody wins. And so uh, I just felt like that's important, and I think that's important. reason I say that because I think it's important in the Big 12 that it's important that we all win. And the better we get, every program gets, and how we do things, the more we're going to be looked at it. But, it, but the better we get, the harder this, this league is going to get. And I think that you're going to see that this year with the parity and where people have to play and what they have to do. We've got a question on the right-hand side. Brian, put your hand up so we can see where you are. Hey, uh, sure. Gary, Baldy here from Fox Sports. Hey, what's up, Baldy? Hey, um, so just to follow up on that theme of every game matters and, you know, the competition in your league, to, to, to play Oklahoma last year, obviously in the Big 12 twice. championship game, twice yeah. in a month. Nobody wanted to play them twice. <laughs> But what's, uh, you know, going forward, that's going to happen with the championship game. So what was the preparation like for the team that you just saw so so soon before? Well, uh, you know, obviously, that was probably, in all my years, uh, that was probably the second best. That was the best or not the second best offense. The other one was Sam Bradford when I played. When you've been around as long as I have, that was probably uh, one of the top offenses. The other one was 2008 when they had Sam Bradford and Gresham and, you know they had they had a pretty good running back that was that was playing from that time and the defense they had, and so I'm able to compare through the years of all the things you have. But it was you know I, you know, you're going to have pluses and minuses. Probably uh, the loss in that game probably possibly cost us a New Year's Six Bowl, so that's the negative. But you you still had an opportunity to win a championship because the winner of that game and I think that's the positive for the league is when you play a round robin, that the second place team gets a sec he gets a second chance, you get a second chance to. Uh, to play the team that, that won it. Now the negative of that is if you do beat that team that might the team with the better record you may keep them out of the playoffs because you have that championship game but uh, because you had to play them a lot of times in other conferences where they have split divisions they don't they only the only time they ever play each other is they play them that one time. And so you don't really have anything to compare it to which to beat somebody twice is, is, is difficult to do and that's why you have to give Oklahoma a lot of credit. Uh, they were able to do that. Because if you watch, then you watch in the championship when they played in the playoff game, they're up 31 to nothing. So uh, they had, and that was a very good defense. Outside of other things I've heard out there, Georgia has a good defense, uh, and they would play well in our conference. But it's 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 a little bit more high flying. There's a little bit more chances being taken, and you've got to score some points if you want to if you want to be able to win. And I do believe that we play pretty good defense in this league. Uh, it's it's uh, just one of those things where you can't you can't judge it on yardage always. You got to see how you play, where you played on the road, and how you do things. So, uh, it's a, uh, it's always a challenge. I can tell you that. This is going to be the final question for the coach, on the right hand side. Put your hand up, please, so he can see you. Yes, sir. Hey, coach. It's uh, Anwar Richardson from Orange Bloods. Coach, you're not a guy who gets a ton of five stars. You don't get a ton of four stars, but you and your staff seem to get a lot out of the guys that you do sign. How do you guys maybe assess, you know, from a recruiting perspective, perspective, the guys that are out there that are two stars, three stars, and then once they get in your program, how do you guys develop them to play at such a high level? Well, number one, uh, that rating's your rating. That's not my rating. So if I'm bringing them in, then I think they're they're a pretty good player. Uh, so in my mind, they may be a four or five star. Now, obviously, we we're, we're getting more of those guys. You know, I've always believed it's not where you start; it's where you finish. And so I want a two-star that will play like a five-star when he's done, not a five-star that will play like a two-star. So our evaluation is is you don't just go recruit whoever you want to recruit. You recruit uh, who fits your program, uh, that position, what you're going to need. You, it's, it doesn't do you any good to have a great athlete if it's a square peg fitting in a round hole. The guy's got to be able to the guy's got to be able to fit that position. Or he needs to be good enough that you'll create a new position within your defense and offense so he can be successful and he's going to make you better. And I think that's one of the things we've always done is uh, we kind of know what we're looking for. Uh, we, we trust the high school coaches in the state of Texas and Louisiana and surrounding states to tell us about the young man. Does he fit what we do and how we do it? Uh, but there's no science. We've made mistakes just like, you know, the guys that have not turned out the way we need them to be. Uh, but as a general rule, I think kids come into our program knowing that you're going to work hard. Uh, and But also that, you know, we, we want you because of, class sizes we want you to get a degree uh, not just talk about it we don't really have many online classes so you, you're gonna you're gonna do you're gonna be in a speech class or you're actually gonna have to give the speeches and, you know if you want to be in sales because I tell them knowledge is power 
knowledge is power. And so if you, when you leave college and if you're, someday your NFL career is going to be done, I think the average is three or four years even if you do make it. And so what are you going to do from 26 on to 62? And so one of the reasons why I've stayed at TCU is that when you move, and I've moved 10 times in my first 15 years, and now I've been here for 21 years, is that when you move, you got to help yourself. you got to get everything in place. you got to do everything. When you stay, you get to help others. And that doesn't just mean TCU or your players. It means the community, Fort Worth. We just got done with the foundation there where we raised a lot of money for literacy and libraries in Tarrant County where we're trying to give back to kids and do things. And I think that's one of the things that all of us, we got to learn. It's, it's kind of like being a young head coach. Really, it's, you know, it's, everybody wants the play caller. Well, you know, about 10% of, of college coaching, being a head coach in college football anymore is play calling. It's 90% of how you manage people. How do you how do you how do you do all of it so that you put everybody in place and they can be successful, whether it's your players or your university or your coaches or anybody else. And so when it comes to recruiting, we try to do the same thing. We try to get guys that when they leave TCU, uh, they're going to be successful. And, you, you know, that's we build a reputation. You can do that. You know, I had a high school coach say to a kid that came over and visit, he said, well, he doesn't play. Well, you don't want me to be a parents don't play. I mean, what you want to do is you want to be a parent. How do I grow them up so they can be, they can become somebody that's not just going to be the, the name in the back of their jersey and a number uh, when they leave TCU or wherever they leave from, uh, they're going to be successful. And so in the recruiting phones, that's what we try to get accomplished is we try to get that done. And, then, you know, that's how we've been able to stay 21 years because you've been, I've been now we're on our fourth athletic director. We've been four, and they've all been great. And in this one that we have now is going to be fantastic and three chancellors. And how do you do that? Because... You know, you just be good people on and up on the field. I got to look like I'm this this guy that's always upset, and then but really that's not who I am. So, don't 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 watch the delivery. Listen to the message. So, go frogs. Okay, coach. Thank you very much. We yep. appreciate your comments.